Elon Musk Dojo Quantum Computing Musk never stops to amaze us. This time, he went on to make a quantum computer named Dojo. So let's see what it is. Quantum computers have the potential to transform computation by solving previously unsolvable issues. While no quantum computer is yet sophisticated enough to perform calculations that a traditional computer cannot, significant progress is being made. But some scientists estimated that quantum computers will have certain benefits over today's computers by 2023. This is why Musk must be involved in the field. So this time we can expect a change as the person behind this is no one other than Elon Musk. The dojo is Tesla's own customized supercomputer platform designed from the ground up for AI machine learning and in particular, video training using video data from its fleet of vehicles. The company already has a big NVIDIA GPU-based supercomputer that's one of the most powerful in the world. But the new Dojo custom-built machine is powered by Tesla chips and infrastructure. The custom-built supercomputer is intended to improve Tesla's ability to train neural nets using video data, which is vital to the company's computer vision technology, which powers its self-driving initiative. So why Musk needed a supercomputer? Musk needed it for Tesla. Tesla expects Dojo to auto-label training footage from its fleet and trains its neural networks as part of the development of its self-driving system. Tesla recognized that its method to create a self-driving system based on neural nets training millions of films from its clients' vehicles would necessitate a significant amount of processing power. So it chose to build its own supercomputer to provide that capacity. That's the short-term goal, but Tesla will find plenty of uses for the supercomputer in the future as the company has great plans to build other artificial intelligence systems. The concept of Dojo is not that recent. Tesla made a cryptic allusion to Dojo, a super powerful training computer for video data processing, in the spring of 2019. Then in the summer of 2020, Musk tweeted, Tesla is developing a neural network training computer called Dojo to process truly vast amounts of video data. It's a monster. A truly useful exaflop at de facto FP32. The unexpected revelation occurred during a presentation by Andres Karpathy, Tesla's senior director of AI, at the 4th International Joint Conference on Computer Vision and Pattern Recognition, the CCVPR 2021. The arrival of Dojo was then formally announced at Tesla's AI Day in 2021. Ganesh Venkataramanan, Tesla's senior director of autopilot hardware, is the project's leader and served as the presentation's point of contact. The Dojo D1 processor is at the heart of the architecture, providing incredible bandwidth and computational abilities. Tesla discovered that existing computing platforms were insufficient for solving their major problem, developing self-driving technology by training enormous neural networks. Now allow me to boast about Dojo. The Dojo core is an integer unit that borrows certain instructions from the RISCV architecture and a number of new instructions developed by Tesla. The Dojo instruction set supports 64-bit scalar instructions and 64-bit SIMD instructions as well as primitives for transferring data from local memory to remote memories. It also supports semaphore and barrier constraints which are required to align memory operations with instructions running not just within a D1 core but across collections of D1 cores. There's a set of shuffle, transpose, and convert instructions that are frequently done in software and are now printed in transistors. And the core also supports stochastic rounding and can do implicit 2D padding, which is commonly done by adding zeros to both sides of a piece of data to adjust a tensor. The D1 processor, the first of what would likely be a line of Dojo chips and systems, is a high-throughput general-purpose CPU, not an accelerator. Or more exactly, Dojo is designed to accelerate itself rather than relying on an external device. Each Dojo node is a full-fledged computer with a single core, dedicated memory, and I.O. interfaces. This is an essential distinction since each core can do its own thing without relying on shared caches, register files, or anything else. The D1 is a superscalar core, which means it enables instruction-level parallelism within its core, as do most modern chips, and it also features a multi-threaded design to drive additional instructions through that core. However, multi-threading is about doing more work per clock rather than having isolated threads that can run separate instances of Linux as a virtual machine. So the Dojo implementation of simultaneous multi-threading, or SMT, in short, lacks virtual memory, has limited protection mechanisms, 
and the Dojo software stack and applications manage the parceling out of chip resources. The D1 core is a 64-bit processor with a fetch window of 32B that can carry up to 8 instructions and an 8-wide decoder that can manage 2 threads per cycle. This front end connects to a 4-wide scalar schedule with 4-way SMT, 2 integer units, 2 address units, and a register file for each thread. There's also a 2-side vector scheduler with 4-way SMT that feeds into a 64B wide SIMD unit or four 8x8x4 matrix multiplication units. Each D1 core's main memory is a 1.25 megabyte SRAM. It's not a cache, and the DDR4 memory that's connected to the bigger Dojo network is more like bulk storage than anything else. The SRAM can load at 400 gigabytes per second and save at 270 gigabytes per second, and the chip contains explicit instructions for moving data to and from external SRAM memory of other Dojo cores. A Lisp parser engine embedded in the SRAM feeds into the pair of decoders and a gather engine embedded in the vector register file, which combined can dispatch information to or take information from other nodes without other additional operations usual in the CPU architectures. This Lisp parsing function is one of the Dojo chip's distinguishing features. This is simply a method of packaging various bits of data so that they can be transported efficiently between D1 cores in a system. The scalar unit handles integers with 8, 16, 32, or 64 bits, and the vector unit and its accompanying matrix units accept a broad number of data formats with varying precisions and numerical ranges, many of which are dynamically composable by the Dojo compiler. A dozen D1 cores are organized into a local block, resulting in a 2D array of 18 cores by 20 cores. The D1 device operates at 2 GHz and contains 440 megabits of SRAM among those cores, delivering 376 teraflops at BF16 or CFP8 and 22 teraflops at FP32. The D1 die contains 576 bidirectional SIRDES channels wrapped around it to connect to other D1 dies as well as 8 terabits per second bandwidth across all four sides. The dies, which are 645 square millimeters, are designed to connect smoothly through those SIRDES into what Tesla refers to as a dojo training tile. According to Tesla, it can combine 2x3 tiles in a tray and two trays in a computer cabinet for a total of more than 100 PFLOPs per cabinet. And thanks to Tesla's extraordinarily high bandwidth, they promise to be able to connect them all to construct the exapod. Furthermore, employing the Tesla Exapod, a 10-cabin system, Tesla's Dojo Exapod will overcome the exaflop of compute barrier, a goal that supercomputer companies have been chasing for a long time. Despite its low power consumption and tiny size for supercomputer, it would become the world's largest AI training machine. Yes, I know it's a lot to take in, but those are just some of its features. Of course, there's so much more about Dojo that I can't explain in this video. Tesla's inspiration for Dojo stems from a tremendous amount of video data acquired from its existing fleet of vehicles, which it uses to train its neural nets. Tesla was unsatisfied with other HPC, or high-performance computing solutions for training its computer vision neural networks, and decided to build its own. It is unusual for supercomputer to be created specifically for one problem. Time will tell if its design is generic enough to apply to other sectors and applications, including deep learning, optimization simulation, and natural language processing, or NLP. Existing supercomputers are more versatile than Dojo. Supercomputers are optimized for exceedingly complicated mathematical models of physical issues or designs, such as climate, cosmology, nuclear weapons, nuclear reactors, innovative chemical and material compounds, pharmaceutical research support, and cryptology. Now, let's see about other supercomputers we already have and how Dojo would stand out. Today's top supercomputers cost $500 million or more and frequently require two 5,000 square foot buildings. They're meant to perform exceedingly complicated mathematical calculations at scale. Thus, building them for a particular application makes no sense. While the majority of today's top supercomputers are dedicated to the defense and intelligence applications, at least one third of those on the top 500 list is dedicated to healthcare, with many supporting critical drug-related research. It's no secret that the majority of the most powerful ones are employed for nuclear weapons research and cybersecurity in the US, the European Union, Russia, 
and China, among others. The first supercomputer was the Control Data Corporation 6600 in 1964, which could perform 3 million floating point operations per second, or flops. In 2020, the PlayStation 5 has a hardware capable of 10.28 teraflops, or nearly 3 million times faster. However, today's fastest supercomputer is clocked at 450 petaflops, which is 10,000 times faster than the PlayStation, and Tesla promises Dojo will reach exascale. An exaflop is one quintillion double precision floating point operations per second. So that's all for today's video. If you made it this far, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more awesome content. Thanks for watching.